It was born as a volcano a half a million years ago, part of the Cascade Mountain Range. Today, Mount Rainier's massive snow-capped peak towers more than 14,000 feet into the sky. Ranked as the fifth tallest in the lower 48, the mountain's hulking presence dominates even the Seattle skyline more than 50 miles away. Each year, thousands of climbers attempt to scale its massive glaciers and deep crevasses for a crack at reaching the summit. But severe weather and treacherous terrain keep more than half from reaching the top. Some never make it back. Mountaineering deaths occur each year caused by rock and ice falls, avalanches and hypothermia. But many accept the risk for a chance to get to the top and to say they've climbed Mount Rainier. Good morning, Sebastian. What are you up to this lovely day? Uh, this morning, we're gonna go do some training. I'm Sebastian. I'm 39 years old, and I'm a TV producer living in New Jersey. I'm gonna climb up and down uh, this one set of hills uh, several times. How heavy is the backpack? The backpack is about 40 pounds. It's got a lot of um, heavy art books and uh, just books. <laughs> Dead weight. <laughs> Pack's not getting any lighter. This is Kevin. He lives in New Jersey too and works in marketing and business development for the energy information industry. So Kevin, is there a reason why you're doing this hike? Uh, yeah, because I trained with Sebastian all summer last year and I, could, and I hurt myself for the New York Marathon. So with my mom passing away, it's kind of given me something to help focus on. I've been thinking about her a lot lately and I, you know, I think when I'm getting up there, you know, maybe it'll be a little more spiritual. And away we go. Up this massive hill. The reason I got involved in this trip was a friend of mine, Justin, wrote me in. He told me about this article he read in Men's Journal, how it was going to be really cool to climb up this mountain. I thought he was nuts to begin with, but after we looked at it, we are like, oh, this might, actually might be kind of really cool to do. It's going to be a lot harder than I think in my mind right now, but I don't think I'll realize that until I get there and I can look up at the mountain and actually see how high it is. So for now, I think we're doing okay, but I think once we get there, everyone's going to be a little bit surprised at, at uh, how big it is and what we're going to actually have to do. This is Brendan, and this is just a little bit of the training that uh, I've been doing for the Rainier Climb. I've got a, uh, a lovely hill in front of my house, and as you can see from here, it just goes straight to the top. The hill is generally used by cardiac patients in the area as part of their recovery process. Brendan is from California and is an environmental consultant. A couple of cars parked throughout the week and gotten some interesting comments from the neighbors. There's one guy up here who uh, likes to ride his bike up and down the hill and uh, try and talk to me at the same time, which is tough because I'm usually out of breath. Uh, here we are at the top of the hill. And every time I make it to the top, it's two hits on the mailbox. This is Steve. Steve is a defense logistics specialist living in Virginia. Go back. At 47, he's the oldest one in the group. Steve has a 60 pound pack on right now. Over the cat litter. Over the cat litter. Now, we will take our route to the Fannie Mae stairwell. Going to the top? Yep. Right. I'm 47 and I need this exercise. So I'm going to come in with a coast all the way to the top. All that smoking didn't help, but it's been more than a year. So maybe my lungs are cleared out. I figured they're conditioning me for the lack of oxygen. Justin's still out of patience with me on him, so it's my goal to catch him. Well, we've got about 25 days till the climb. And we've been trying to do this climb for about twice a week. Justin is from Maryland. He works at Fannie Mae as an information technology manager. We started maybe three weeks ago. It was a chore the first couple times. It still is a chore. But uh, we just got done fin finishing our uh, fifth fifth summit of eight flights of stairs and 
it's gotten a lot easier. Penthouse, baby. A couple times I took the backpack into work. Yeah, here we go. Uh, hiking through the newsroom. Let's just go. And you will see me. My colleagues uh, thought I was going camping. More like, <laughs> where are you going? Are you going on a trip? <laughs> I, are you leaving Fox News anytime soon? What's going on? And I had to like, explain to them that I was actually training. And everyone sort of said, are you crazy? <laughs> okay, where's he going? Are you running today? And I had to ask the security guard in case I had this feeling like if I fell down on the 28th floor, you know, they'd find my mummified body like three months later. It's a high rise, you know, 44 mm -hmm. flights. Definitely the stairs. It's the best workout in the shortest amount of time. This is kind of like uh, one of those experiences that you have with you for a long time. It has nothing to do with your work, nothing to do with your uh, employment stuff. It's totally you. It's totally what you do for yourself and um, your own uh, achievement. It's kind of like running a marathon. You're doing it on your own. And you own two legs. Well, folks, uh, the left side of the airplane today. And what do you think? You I think it's definitely doable. Yeah. Said hello. Gave a little wink. You got your stuff? All geared up. All right. What Ready do you think? Yeah, I couldn't believe how much snow was out there. Yeah. Sebastian, a little uh, daunting. Yeah. And, uh, we'll see how far we get up that thing. Here we are, all here, having the spaghetti, getting all uh, <laughs> carved up. So uh, here's to our trip, and I hope we can all. Enjoy it. <laughs> here, here. Here, here. Cheers. Cheers. Because it sucks so far. <laughs> I think Honestly, that's going to be the freakiest the part of the whole thing is that 5 o'clock when the sun comes up I or agree. something like that. I think the whole, yeah, camping out and like halfway up a mountain for a couple hours and then like, climbing up is going to be a little weird. Did you see the pictures of the, yeah, the, the midway place? So I did. No, what did it look like? It, it's not the hall, it, it looked like this, right? I mean, it looked like no bigger than the kitchen. With just, it looked like a Japanese motel or something. Like where you, where you like sleep. Seinfeld, they're on the. Drawers. It looked like a morgue. Like a morgue. It is like a <laughs> civil war morgue. The cabin he's talking about is part of Camp Mir, the base camp where we'll stay before the final push to the top. It will take two days to get there, and since we're all amateurs, we've turned to the professionals to guide us up this tricky ascent. Oh boy, there it is. First, we hit the slopes to learn some basic climbing skills. Here we are on the mountain. Did some training. There's a little steep slope. How'd it go? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's good. I like the hat, Justin. That's good. These are my uh, bug glasses. And, uh, Apparently the uh, sun is even reflective on this bad weather day. So we had a rest where we figured out how to stop, switch back and forth the rope, and it was good. Finally, it's climb day. Our journey begins with a drive up a twisty road to Paradise Ranger Station at 5,420 feet above sea level. The view of Mount Rainier's snow-covered peak is amazing, but the trip to the top will test our mental and physical stamina. Our guide for this journey is Gary Talcott, a veteran mountaineer who's climbed Rainier more than 200 times. Gary's packing his stuff. At the Jackson Visitor Center, we have time for one last equipment check. Boots ready? <laughs> Getting everything ready? ready. Suit up? Yeah. How you feeling? Good. I'm psyched. Any thoughts? 
just glad it's not raining as, as hard as it was when we came down yesterday. So, it was raining like crazy. It was cats and dogs. And where's your pack? Right over there. My lovely little friend for the next 24 hours. Got a lot of layers here. My gators and my waterproof stuff, my shell. Very Got a little nice, light on the top, nice. it's gonna work up a sweat. Alright. Candy bars in the pocket, so let's do it. Let's head out. And then we start the long haul up, following the skyline trail to the near snowfield. As we climb, the temperature drops noticeably towards the freezing point, and as the air gets thinner, breathing becomes more difficult. First rest stop. Gary has a stop every hour to rest and fuel up on candy bars and water. It's essential we pace ourselves and conserve energy. Yes, sir. Justin. Oh, good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Look at that. Mount's beautiful. Breaking the weather. Let's see how long that lasts. At first, the weather cooperates, giving us great views of the mountain. But then, the wind kicks up. The clouds move in. Yeah, it's got a good stiff uh, 30, 40 mile on wind. It's a lot cold out here. And we're about to do some more uh, climbing. And up there at the peak, way up top. Then, as we rest on the snow fields at around 9,000 feet, wet snow whipped by a driving gale makes things still worse. It's pretty freaking cold. We need to take these out of the race. Got some swift moon clouds coming in. It was a whiteout. There's some weird birds here. Yeah. A little bit of a slog come out though. Yeah, it was. Yeah? How's it yeah. going, Kevin? It's good. How are you feeling? Hanging in. Yeah? What's it like out here? Cold? A little too. Brian, you good? Yeah. It's good. Put an extra layer on, huh? An extra layer to the heavy looking camera right now. All of a sudden, about a thousand feet from Camp Mir, we're hit by 50 mile an hour winds and whiteout conditions. We can't see more than a couple of feet in front of us. When we were coming up in the blinding snowstorm, I was uh, I was a hurt puppy, and uh, just a lot of deep breaths. Had to stop a few times, but uh, one of the guides kicked me in the ass, and I made it up to Camp Mir. Okay, we're in the camp cabin, and it is freaking insane out there. Whiteout conditions, and yeah, we hiked through some intense yeah, whiteout conditions. So, that was intense. Anyway, we're on the cabin. Steve, tell us what happened out there. Where the deal? It was an endurance test for sure. What happened? What, what, what do we see? <laughs> See? Nothing. <laughs> There's white out conditions, right? I saw Gary's boots. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, uh, that's just a, that's uh, the treads of, of uh, Kevin's boots. I was like, I just got to concentrate on those treads. Yeah. Yeah. So, Justin, you were, that was pretty intense, huh? It was awesome, man. We, uh, last hour and a half I didn't was, uh, I was just looking at the back white out snowstorm. Wind must have been what, 40 miles per hour? <laughs> yeah. That was intense. It was awesome. Water here. It's a very basic cabin. But it's fantastic. It's the most glorious castle in the sky. It really, really is. But, uh, things can go really wrong really fast. You got them to warm up? Until about 12, 1 o'clock, and then we head out. So we're going to chill out and see what happens. In the night, the storm passes and the weather clears. At around 2 a.m., equipped with helmets, avalanche beepers, crampons, and flashlights, 
we head into the darkness under a starlit sky. Our route takes us across ice-covered Cowlitz Glacier and over Cathedral Rocks, a ridge of loose rock and ice which we find tricky to navigate in the darkness, carrying heavy packs. Every step we take, the snow from yesterday's storm gets deeper and more unstable. Okay. Well, we got an incredible He's view. Well, thank you. Check this out. As the sun finally rises over little Tahoma, the remnants of a volcano that erupted a half a million years ago, we hear the news. We need people to be on their game on the way down, okay? A three-foot avalanche pit dug by the guides proves conditions are too dangerous for us to move on. 11,000 feet. And we have avalanche problems, so we're not going any further. But that's the top right there of Mount Rainier. And there's way too much snow. Avalanche problems. We're disappointed, but we know the guides are right. It's pretty incredible. It's about 6 a.m. We tried climbing, we couldn't make it. But hey, it's beautiful. We had to turn around early, but uh, being back here and uh, kind of still in celebration mode, it's, uh, it's just great to regroup. Uh, and knowing that, uh, well, just knowing that we, uh, we set a goal and we went through it. That's right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We still gotta, of course, get down from yeah. here, but that should fall into place, no problem. Yeah. And uh, it's been an unbelievable experience. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Kevin? Uh, the climb was great. We had a great two days. We, you know, we really battled a bunch of adverse conditions from the whiteout blizzard yesterday just to get to the camp. So when we got here yesterday, we couldn't see anything. Just that door, right? Just that door. We came up right up this way. Getting settled last night here in the wind howl. We up here, surrounded by the mountains and the clouds. And it, it just it feels, it feels almost cathartic in a way. Well, the training was all worth it. Wish I had done a little bit more. But uh, I'm sure we all probably felt that way a little bit. And uh, it was a great experience. What all cherish, and I'm sure we'll have the picture up of the five of us. And uh, that'll that'll be up on the wall for quite some time. That is Mount Hood, Oregon. Over there is Mount St. Helens. It's similar to running a marathon in that a lot of distance, you just concentrating on each mile. Run. Same thing with the mount, each each step, just concentrating each step. Little gap, little uh, break, and uh, then up, then you, you get up to the top. Then. So we've trained for a marathon together, and now this. What's our next uh, training going to be for? I think ice cream training. <laughs> uh, ice cream eating Sunday training is definitely tough. We're going to have to start small and then work our way up. Here we are, about to leave. At 8 a.m. on June 3rd, we retrace our steps and head back to Paradise Base Camp. A mountain paradise. Now it's time to go down. Nice little dinner, a couple of beers, nice shower, good stuff. After five friends trained for half a year to scale this awesome peak, in the end, the mountain said, no, not this time, boys. Right, take a shot. 